Hi friends, in the previous uh, three videos in the steering system chapter, we discussed about the introduction, then the mechanical steering rack and pinion steering system, then the power assisted rack and pinion steering system. Now in this video, I am going to explain about the orbital steering system which is being used in the construction and mining machines. Orbital steering system also is a power steering system operated through hydraulic pressure, but this circuit is entirely different from the power steering what we have discussed in the previous videos. Certain components are common like steering wheel, steering shaft, this bell crack, this tire rods and all these mechanical components are common. The design of the mechanical components depends on the mission to mission. Whereas what is the difference here is the first one it will be having a very heavy duty hydraulic pump and whereas for the majority of the missions there will be exclusively one pump will be there for the steering purpose. Then there will be an orbitral wall. This function of the orbitral valve is entirely different from the function of the rotary control valve what we have seen in the previous videos. Then there will be hydraulic cylinders. The steering operation is done only through this heavy duty hydraulic cylinders. And there will be some more walls in between the orbital wall and the steering cylinders like flow amplifier wall. This is a flow amplifier wall. And there will be some other walls, the priority walls that is between the pump and the orbital wall. There will be some pressure regulator valves and so many other safety valves are there. There will be some accumulator valve and all. This type of orbital steering system is used on higher capacity machines like this is the mining truck. This is the wheel loader used in the construction of mining segment. And also you can see some higher capacity trucks and all. So what are the main components as we discussed? Orbital valve, the steering pump, is the main pump and in between some valves and the steering cylinders. How each and every component works? Let us this illustration is about the orbital valve. An assembled orbital valve looks like this. This is the casing, this is the casing. This is the inner spool. This is the inner spool. You can see the slots here in the spool. This is the outer spool. Both together are held with the help of this is the pin. This is called the deflector pin. The purpose of the deflector pin is to hold this together and also to give certain degree of movement rotation to this inner spool. Why this rotation is required to clockwise or anti-clockwise to align the oil passages of the inner spool to the oil passages of the outer spool to supply the oil to the desired direction of the steering cylinders. How this alignment will occur? In these slots, I mean here, steering shaft will come and sit here. When the steering shaft is rotated, this will rotate. After rotating few degrees, the entire unit rotates as a single unit. An entire unit. What is the job of this leaf spring, small springs here, which sits here? As soon as the driver releases the steering wheel because of its spring pressure and all the spool in the spool will come to the neutral position cutting off the oil supply to this outer spool this is one unit this complete unit is referred or called as the rotary valve unit rotary control valve unit the second main unit of this pump is the zero torque pumping unit Below this, there is a zero torque pump. You can see in this picture, this is the top side of the orbital wall. This is the body, and uh, this is the inner spool. This is the outer spool. This is the deflector pin. These are the springs, leaf springs, and this is the center one, which is going and driving the gyrator pump. This is a gyrator pump unit. 
the function of the gyrator pump is the whatever is oil is coming from this pool will be entered through this gyrator pump and the job of this gyrator pump is to meter that is quantify the oil and to supply the cylinders metering means quantifying the oil is the job of this gyrator pump the discharge quantity from this gyrator pump depends upon the number of revolutions of the steering wheel the more revolutions more quantity means more steering angle less revolutions less steering angle this is the gyrator pumping unit the third unit here is the housing housing also is main important because this is having so many ports inside you can see the slots and ports whatever oil is coming out of this has to enter into these ports then go to this gyrator pump from there again quantified or metered oil has to come here and discharge to through any one of this port if you see this port four ports here this is p means the oil is coming pressurized oil is coming from the pump t means the oil is going to the tank means it is a return line if the steering function is not there or the oil is coming from the steering line the oil comes here and goes to the tank these two lines one line is for the left side steering the other one is for the right side steering there is one more relief valve is here here is the relief valve here you can see this is the relief valve so when the steering wheel is rotated the steering shaft rotates this inner spool that is this spool left or right direction so when it is rotated the oil port or oil holes align get synchronizes with the oil ports of this outer spool and oil is diverted to the gyrator from here the oil is quantified and supplied to the respective direction to the both the cylinders the gyrator pump how it works we have seen the working of the rotary vane pump now how the gyrator pump this is having mainly two components this is called total gyrator assembly this is outer gear unit this is the inner gear unit if you see any gyrator pump the number of slots on the outer casing will be more than the number of teeth of the inner rotor because that is required to create the vacuum and pressure when the complete unit is rotating the complete unit is rotating it has to create vacuum and also pressure how it the vacuum created and pressure is created you can see the entire unit is rotating if you see the slots when it is coming here here the zero space and the space is increasing here when the space is increasing because of the vacuum creation oil is drawn inside okay and oil whatever is drawn is compressed and this is the maximum volume for the oil and again it start reducing and as the volume start reducing oil is pumped out this is how the gyrator pumps works that's why the amount of the oil discharge from this pump depends upon the number of revolutions of the pump that is number of revolutions of the steering wheel then coming to the main pump unit of the orbital steering system that is the oil supply from where the oil comes hydraulic oil to the orbital valve is from the main pumps missions use two types of pumps some very high capacity missions like mining missions and all they use the axial piston type pump looks like this these are the pistons there will be seven pistons or 11 pistons depending upon the size of the pump and the desired volume of the pump this is connected to a shaft and this is the housing of the pump this together rotates as a single unit but you can see the difference there is certain angle is maintained between this housing and as well as the piston this is called the swash plate the plate which is holding the piston is called the swash plate you can see this line and this line there is a this angle is made why this angle is maintained at this position the space between the space inside the cylinder is less so because it is very close here 
and at the top the space available between the piston top and the cylinder is more so when the complete unit is rotating here zero space or less space when it starts rotating gradually volume increases suction is created and oil is drawn inside and when it comes again from here to here gradually the volume is decreased in coming down and the oil is pumped out this is the axial piston display axial piston pump and some machines uses the spur gear pump this is a gear pump you have seen earlier also some gear pumps the difference between the gear pump and the axial piston pump is the gear pump the discharge will be fixed but depending upon the rpm of the pump whereas in case of axial piston pump the discharge will vary depending upon the load requirement this is called variable displacement discharge pump how this will vary the discharge vary due to the change in angle between the housing and the swash plate how the change in angle occurs that is a different mechanism this happens through a governor fitted in the pump how the governor work again through the load sensing this is a big circuit of the axial piston pump so in broad this can create variable discharge depending upon the system requirement that is the difference between the axial piston pump and the gear pump uh, the orbital wall we have seen and the main oil supply pump we have seen now we will see the cylinders this type of system uses the heavy duty cylinders double acting cylinders this is the cylinder double acting means the piston will move in both directions with the hydraulic pressure if the oil is coming in this direction the piston is moved here and that oil whatever is here will be discharged to the tank again when the oil is coming in this direction piston is moved inside and the discharge oil will go there that's why it is called as the double acting piston when you cut the cylinder looks like this this is the cylinder gray one this is the one the cylinder barrel inside this is the rod this is the base end this is the rod end and this is the piston means this piston this is having seals to give a sealing between these two chambers and these are the seals for the rod the seals and all to prevent the oil leakage this is how the cylinder looks and we talked about the some more valves in the system there is a flow amplifier valve between the orbital valve and the cylinders the function of the flow amplifier valve is to amplify the system pressure to multiple levels there is an accumulator valve is there this is mainly before in between the main pump and the orbital valve we can see the construction of the accumulator this is the metallic casing and inside there is a rubber diaphragm this is a special quality rubber and the blue color indicates the gas generally it is filled with inert gas that is nitrogen gas at specified pressure and this orange line or yellow line is the oil always available from the pump so this is already completely pressurized with the nitrogen gas when it is closed it looks like this some of the accumulators looks like this the purpose of this accumulator is there when suddenly engine is switched off because of the nitrogen pressure is available here the system complete the system whatever the oil is available certain a certain pressure is being maintained in the line so you can either bring the machine to the neutral position or even just park in a safe place the other main job is that one it can absorb all kind of shocks coming through the steering mechanism so it acts as a pulsation damper by absorbing the shocks these are certain valves and you can see there is a priority valve as i told you the function of the priority valve is normally steering being the safety concern 
oil whatever is oil is coming from the pump that is from the steering pump and also the implement hydraulic pump implement means the oil which is going to the bucket rising or tilting in case of loaders or dump body hoisting or lowering in case of dumpers that is called implement so whatever is oil coming from the implement side of the steering the first priority will be given to the steering in case the oil quantity uh, the oil uh, in the steering system is less the oil from the implements is diverted through this priority valve and the arrangement of the cylinders looks like this there are two types of machines will be there this is the articulated truck means these machines do not steer by turning this tires these machines do steer by moving the both halves of the machine with a center pivot there will be center pivot joint will be here here it is center pivot joint there are cylinders are here the entire machine is moved like this or like this this is called center pivot so the steering cylinders are connected in between two halves of the machines like this there is a cylinder there is a cylinder the direction so we want to move towards the left left cylinder has to retract right has to extend if you want to move right right has to retract left has to extend so this is also articulated system you can see the steering cylinders here you can see the cylinders connected this is the rear half this is the front half right yes of dump trucks mining dump trucks and all these cylinders are connected only to the front wheels can see these are cylinders the front wheels come here here one wheel and here one wheel one cylinder retracts one cylinder extends so the tire rod moves like this sorry like this and this lamp move is like this so dumpers this mechanism is available to the chassis and just brief you once again the complete system oil from the main pump comes to this orbital valve here this is the red line generally the oil pressure in the steering system ranges from 1800 psi to 2000 psi and in case of the implements that will be approximately 3000 psi that is pounds per square inch oil from here comes here and uh, depending on the requirement uh, of the steering which side we have to steer the vehicle the pink line <coughs> is the working oil pressurized oil you can see the arrangement of the piping actually this line is going to the base end of the one cylinder and same line is coming to the rod end of the other cylinder and other line which is connected to the base end is connected to the rod end of the other cylinder because one cylinder has to extend and one cylinder has to retract simultaneously then only steering action takes place so oil is coming here and the pressurizer is pushing this cylinder out and pushing this cylinder in and whatever the oil is available on the other side of the piston is returning to the tank through this blue line this is how the orbital orbital steering system functions the most important maintenance points of the orbital steering system is use only the recommended grade of oil replace the oil at regular intervals as per the manufacturer recommendation and also the filter use the genuine filters and replace the filters as per the schedule and ensure no dust is entered in the system hope this is useful to you all and go, go through these three pages notes in case you have any queries you can always contact me through the email please share this video to your colleagues or friends and subscribe to my channel thank you <clears throat>